Here's a lesson for section 3.4, communicating with algebra. We'll learn everything to do with polynomials in this lesson. So we'll learn about how to classify a polynomial by name. We'll learn about how to find the degree of a polynomial. We'll also look at what a term is, how to find the degree of a term, and we'll also learn about what part of the term is the coefficient, what part of the term is the variable. So let's get started by looking at a term. First off, a term is an expression formed by the product of numbers and or variables. So this below here is the product of a number and a variable, 4 times x squared. So that is a term. Okay. So the number in front of the variable, this 4 here, that's in front of the x squared, is called the coefficient. So we need to know that word, co efficient. So for this term here, 4x squared, the coefficient is a number in front, so it's 4, and the variable part of this term is the x squared. Okay, So include the letter and the exponent as well. So this is a term. It's the product of a number and a variable, 4 times x squared. That is a term. So let's, let's look at a few terms here. So we're going to read a few sentences, look at the term that represents the information in the sentence, and then be able to say what part of that term is the coefficient, what part of that term is the variable. So in part A, Jim earns $7 per hour at his part-time job. If he works for X amount of hours, his earnings in dollars are 7 times X. So the expression we have here, the term we have, is 7 times X. The coefficient is a number in front of the variable. So it's 7, and the variable is x. So look at b. The depth in meters of a falling stone in a well after t seconds is the quadratic relation negative 4.9 t squared. So that's my term, negative 4.9 t squared. So the coefficient is a number in front of the variable. So my variable is t squared. The number in front is negative 4.9. Don't forget about that negative. And I put a note off to the side about that. Okay, the negative sign is included with the coefficient, so negative 4.9. And then my variable is t squared. Don't forget to include, include the exponent with the letter. Part C, the area of a triangle with base b and height h is 1 half times base times height. So that's how you find the area of a triangle. You do half times base times height. And that's a term there. Okay. The coefficient of that term is the half. The number in front is 1 over 2. The variable part is bh. The variable part can include more than one letter. So I put a little note here. The vari variable can consist of more than one letter or symbol. So make sure to include all of it, b times h. Include all of the unknowns for the variable part. We don't know b, we don't know h. That's the variable part. Part d, the area of a square with side length k is k squared. So that's our term, k squared. So for this one, the coefficient, we know the coefficient is the number in front of the variable. And we don't see anything in front. But we have to remember, if you don't see a number in front of the variable, there is an invisible 1 there. Okay? So the coefficient is 1, and the variable is k squared. Okay? Sometimes people will want to think if they don't see a number in front of the variable, they think there's a 0 there. But if, it, if there was a 0, that would mean it was 0 times k squared. And that would eliminate the k squared. 0 times anything is 0. So the k squared would not be able to exist if there was a 0 in front of it. So what is actually in front of that k squared is a 1. OK, let's learn about what a polynomial is. So a polynomial is an algebraic expression consisting of one or more terms. And we just learned what a term was connected by addition or subtraction operators. So we have a couple of, this is our example here, we have a couple of terms. I have a 3x squared, remember a term is the product of numbers and or variables. So I have a 3 times x squared plus 2 times x. So here's a term, 3x squared, here's a term, 2x, and it's separated by an addition sign. Okay, so this is a polynomial. Let's read this definition one more time. A polynomial is an algebraic expression consisting of one or more terms connected by addition or subtraction operators. We can classify polynomials by the number of terms it has. So if a term, or sorry, if a polynomial only has one term, for example, this one right here, 4x squared, there's nothing being added or subtracted from that term, 
Okay, so that's a polynomial that only has one term. What we do is we call that a monomial. Monomial. If a polynomial has two terms, as in this example here, I've got a term here and a term there. I can distinguish the separation between the terms by the operator between them. I see an addition sign, it's separating these two terms. What we do is we call that a binomial. If the polynomial has two terms, it's a binomial. If the polynomial has three terms, we call that a trinomial. And if the polynomial has four terms, we call that, there's no special name for that one, we just call that a four-term polynomial. Four-term polynomial. So for any of the polynomials higher than, um, with more than three terms, poly, ooh, I spelled that wrong, polynomial. Four-term polynomial. Okay? For any term, sorry, I was just saying, if, for any term that has more than three, for any polynomial that has more than three terms, there's no special name for it. So if it has four terms, it's a four-term polynomial. If it has five terms, it's a five-term polynomial. Six terms, a six-term polynomial. Okay, so, but the important ones to remember are the first three. Those are the ones with the special name. If it has one term, it's a monomial. Two terms, it's a binomial. If it has three terms, it's a trinomial. Okay. So let's practice classifying these polynomials by name. And I put a little hint at the bottom here. You can find the number of terms by looking for the addition and subtraction operators that separate the terms. So in the first one, I'm going to look for my addition and subtraction signs. I only see one right there, so that's separating my two terms. So I've got a term here, a term here. It has two terms. And I know the name for a polynomial with two terms is a binomial. Now let's look at the next one. I see a negative 2 times n. So that's a product of a number and a variable. I see nothing added or subtracted from that. That is just a single term right there. Okay? So if it only has one term, the type of polynomial that is, is a monomial. The next one, let's look for my addition and subtraction signs to separate my terms. I see a subtraction sign there, a plus sign there. That is separating three terms. I have a 4x squared, there's a term. Negative 3xy, there's a term. And a y squared, there's a term. Okay, so I've got three terms. I know a polynomial has three terms. It's called the trinomial. And the last one, I see four terms. Okay, one, two, three, four. And I can distinguish those by looking for the addition and subtraction signs separating them. So that's four terms. I just call that has no special name, it's just a four-term polynomial. Okay, let's move on. We have to be able to find the degree of a term. Okay? The degree of a term is the sum of the exponents on the variable, on the variables, sorry, in a term. So to find the degree of a term, we add up the exponents on the variables in a term. For this one, let's do an example. I have 5 times x squared times y cubed. That's one term. It's the product of num a number and variables. So what we need to do to find the degree of this term, we add the exponents on the variables. I have a 2 and a 3. So 2 plus 3 is 5. That means the degree of the term is 5. Let's do a few examples of this. So I've got a bunch of terms here. Let's do them one at a time. So I have x squared. That only has one exponent, and x exponent is a 2. Therefore, the degree of the term is 2. Same with this one. I have 3y to the 4. The sum of the exponents, well, there's only one exponent there, and it's a 4. So the degree of the term is 4. This next one, this one's a little tricky. 0.7 uv. There's a term, the product of numbers and variables. I need to add the exponents on the variables. So I know if I don't see an exponent on this u, there's an invisible one there. And same with the v, there's an invisible exponent one there. So the sum of these, the exponents on the variables in this term is 1 plus 1, which is 2. So this, is, this term has a degree of 2. Next one, negative 2, a squared, b. That's my term. I know this b has an invisible 1. The degree of this term, to find it, I add 
the exponents on the variables. 2 plus 1 is 3. So the degree of this term is 3. So let's put, to do the next one, so here's my term. It's just a constant. It's just negative 5. No variables at all. If I want to find the degree of that term, the definition of the degree of a term is the, let's go back to it, is the sum of the exponents on the variables. Okay. Do I have any variables here? No. So there are no exponents on the variables. So the sum of the exponents on the variables is 0. So the degree of the term is 0. So let's fill out these little rules down here. A variable that appears to have no exponent, like this u and the v and that b there, even though it appears to have no exponent, we know it actually has an exponent of 1. And a constant, so just a number, with no variables attached to it, has a degree of 0. Let's keep going. To find the degree of a polynomial, the degree of a polynomial is equal to the degree of the highest degree term in a polynomial. So to find the degree of a polynomial, what we do is we find the degree of each term in the polynomial. Whichever term has the highest degree, whatever that degree is, that is also the degree of the polynomial. So for example, for this polynomial here, there are three terms. Let's find the degree of each term. So remember, to find the degree of the term, you add the exponents on the variables in the term. So let's look just at this first term here, 3x squared y to the 4. Add the exponents, 2 plus 4 is 6. So this term has a degree 6. The second term, 11x squared y squared. Add the exponents, 2 plus 2, 4. And the last term here, there's only one exponent, it's a 5, so that term has a degree 5. So the highest degree term is this one here. 3x squared y to the 4, 3x squared y to the 4. The degree of that term we established was 6. Therefore, the degree of the polynomial is also 6. It's equal to the degree of the highest degree term. Let's do a couple examples. OK, here's our polynomial here, x plus 3. Let's find the degree of each of the terms. The degree of x is 1, because I know there's an invisible 1 on that x. I know the degree of a constant is 0. So the term with the highest degree is my x. The degree of that term is 1. So the degree of my polynomial is also 1. Next one, 5x squared minus 2x. Here's my two terms, 5x squared and negative 2x. What I need to do, I need to find the degree of each of these terms. The degree of the first term is 2. The degree of this term, I know there's an invisible 1 on that x, is 1. So 5x squared is the highest degree term in that polynomial. The degree of that term is 2, so the degree of my polynomial is 2. Third one, 3y cubed plus 0.2y minus 1. Let's find the degree of each term. The degree of the first term is 3, the degree of this term is 1, and the degree of any constant is 0. So 3y cubed is the highest degree term in that polynomial. The degree of this is equal to the sum of the exponents on the variables. It only has one variable, and the exponent on that variable is 3. So the degree of that term is 3. Therefore, the degree of the polynomial is also 3. Let's look at the last one. 7x squared y to the 4 plus x to the 6y. So I have two terms in this polynomial. Let's find the degree of each term by adding the exponents on the variables. Let's do the first term. 2 plus 4 is 6. And this one, remember there's an invisible 1 on that y. 6 plus 1 is 7. So the second term actually is the highest degree term in that polynomial. It is a degree 7. So the degree of the polynomial is also 7. Let's apply the knowledge that we've, just, um, that we've learned here. So I work part-time as a golf instructor. I earn 125 bucks for the season, plus $20 for each children's lesson, and $30 for each adult lesson. Write an expression that describes my total earnings for the season. Identify the variables and what they stand for. Okay, so my variables here, so what, first of all, I need an equation that represents um, my total earnings. So my earnings, I'll use E to represent that, equals, I get 125 bucks for the season right up front. That's great, 125, plus I make $20 for each children's lesson. I don't know how many children's lessons I give, 
So I know I get 20 bucks times the number of children's lessons I get. So I'll use the variable C for number of children's, I'll use child lessons. Okay. And I know, so I know I also get thirty dollars for each adult lesson. So I get thirty dollars times the number of adult lessons I get. So A equals number of adult lessons. So I've defined my variables. So I know what this equation represents. I know I, my earnings equals one hundred twenty-five bucks plus twenty times the number of children lessons I give plus thirty times the number of adult lessons I get. So, what does the question ask us to do here? If I give eight children's lessons and six adult lessons, what were my total earnings? So, I have an equation that will tell me that. I know my earnings equals 125 plus 20 times the number of children's lessons, and it tells me children's lessons is eight, so 20 times eight, plus 30 times the number of adult lessons, and it tells me the adult lessons is six. So 30 times 6. So this equation, if I evaluate this correctly using the correct order of operations, will tell me my total earnings for that season. So let's figure it out. So my earnings equals 125 plus 20 times 8 is 160 plus 30 times 6 will give me 180. So if we simplify that out, 120 plus 160 plus 180, I figure that my earnings is equal to 465. So I should write a nice concluding statement here. Um, if I give that many lessons, I will earn $465. So I'll just write, Mr. Jensen would earn Four hundred and sixty-five dollars. Not not a whole lot of amount of money for an entire season. Four hundred and sixty-five bucks. Well, to review quickly what we've learned for this lesson, what I have here, okay, blank is an expression formed by the product of numbers and/or variables. That is a term. Blank is an algebraic expression consisting of one or more terms connected by addition or subtraction signs. That's a polynomial. Third one, the sum of the exponents on the variables in a term. That's the degree of a term. And you can probably guess what the last one will be. Equal to the degree of the highest degree term in a polynomial. Well, that's the degree of the polynomial. Degree of a polynomial. Let's see if I can fit this in here. Perfect. So that's it for that lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know.